What's up guys, it's Parallax Abstraction and welcome to PXA Peaks at Load Runner Legacy. This has been out for a little while now actually and I really wanted to cover this when I saw that it had come out because I was a big, big fan of Load Runner back in the day. So Load Runner is a, I guess you could call it an action puzzle game, but it's really just more of a puzzle game that came out originally back in the 8-bit era. So think uh, Commodore 64, Atari 8-bit computers, things like that. And it's had sort of various different iterations over the years on different platforms and it kind of went dormant for a long time. And then this small company called Tozai Games, which has actually been around for a long time, it's sort of a, an American and Japanese sort of collaborative company, I guess you could say. It has management teams from both countries. Uh, and they put out some uh, interesting titles over the years. They put out R-Type Dimensions, which was kind of like a, a remake and modernization of the original R-Type. They've actually done some other Load Runner products and a few mobile games as well. And I guess they managed to get a hold of the, the rights for this, because you can actually see there at the bottom, it's they own the copyright now. And they put this thing out on PC exclusively, which was kind of a surprise to me, because this really struck me as a game that would be great for consoles, because it is... Well, you can play it with a keyboard, but it is definitely uh, well suited to a controller. And it's sort of a modernization of Load Runner. It has a lot of the original levels, a ton of new levels, and a bunch of other content in it as well. And it has sort of this interesting sort of voxel-y art style to it. So I sweat, okay, you know, Load Runner... Load Runner was really cool back in the day for me, but it's something I kind of, I, I guess, lost appeal in as I got older. But I went, let's grab this and check it out. And it's a fairly faithful Load Runner title, but it's got some major problems that I'm going to go over with you here. So first off, let's talk about how much content we've got in this. So there are 50 levels in the sort of main adventure mode, if you will. There's not really a story to it. It's just, uh, they just call it adventure mode. One of the things that made Load Runner famous back in the day was how many levels were in it and how much content you got. So there's 50 levels in there. There's 50 levels in the puzzle mode, which are <clears throat> sort of smaller challenge uh, rooms. Basically rooms that don't necessarily take long to beat if you know the solution, but are rather tricky to figure out. So a little challenge mode. And then there's the classic mode, which has a an art style much more representative of the original 8-bit game and has all the original levels from it. 150 of them. Yeah, I'm not kidding. To say there is an abundance of content in this game for your 20 US dollars is an understatement. It is crazy how much stuff you get in here. And of course it wouldn't be a load runner game without a full level creator as well. And this game does have full online support for that. So you can create levels, you can also create characters and items and you can download other people's stuff and uh, play it if you want. So as you can see here, they call it world levels mode. So it's showing recent and popular stuff, but as you can see, these are all levels made by other people. So we'll check into some of that later, but it's pretty impressive. There's a ton of content in here, which I very much appreciate. Where this game unfortunately really falls down is on the technical side. So this, like I said, this is on PC only. It also runs in the Unity engine, which is a, you know, if you know me, you know I have some problems with Unity in terms of its technical prowess, but it's, it's generally fairly robust. There's only two resolutions you can play this in, 1080p and 720p. So those of you with larger monitors are gonna be stuck not running at your native resolution. And in addition, there is a major problem with the frame rate. So I have a 144 Hertz monitor. You may have noticed that this video is presently at 30 frames a second. That's because if you play this at 60 Hertz, the game runs at 30 frames a second, which is apparently for reasons I cannot possibly understand the reason, the way it was designed. It's supposed to run at 30 frames a second. If I clock my monitor up to 120 Hertz or 144 Hertz, the frame rate goes up in lockstep with that by basically by a multiple. So if I up my monitor to 144 Hertz, I get a much smoother experience, but the game logic increases in speed with it. So the whole game is moving faster, not just the frame rate. That's kind of unacceptable to me, to be honest with you. I am no frame rate snob. I am good at games, so I can actually play games at 30 frames a second. But the problem that we're gonna see here is that it, Unfortunately, it does feel like there is a noticeable control lag when playing this game at 30 frames a second. It really doesn't feel right. And increasing the game to a higher frame rate fixes that problem, but then makes everything run too fast and thus makes it a lot harder. I don't understand it. 
for a game that looks this basic, that's unacceptable to begin with. And you could kind of see it if you went, well, at least this, maybe if this was a console port or something, okay, but it's not. It's not out anywhere else. It's not out on consoles. It's not even out on mobile devices. This is a PC exclusive title that doesn't look all that amazing that's locked at 30 frames. Don't get it. Don't get it. And that's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people, so I want to front load that. So, all right. So let's get into the adventure mode. We're going to start at the beginning here, and I'm going to show you how this works. So every 10 levels, you get a little funny sequence like this, because every 10 levels, the game introduces usually new enemies. So some of the previous Load Runner games that have come out introduced a lot of other concepts in terms of things like weapons, uh, where you would have uh, other ways in which you could attack enemies or get your way through levels. This, go, this is based much more in sort of the root of the series in that it does introduce new enemy types as you go on, which is something that the original game didn't have, but it doesn't introduce new weapons. So the way you this game works is you run around, you cannot jump, but you have this ability. You have the ability to basically burrow out level blocks to either side of you. And the reason that you do that is both to create yourself a path to other areas of the level, but also to trap enemies. So we'll get to a point in this where you'll start seeing some enemies come into the mix, and your goal with the, with doing that is to trap the enemies so that they stop pursuing you, because all the enemies do in this is pursue you. There, there's no guns or anything like that. So the enemies will uh, come after you, and obviously if they touch you, you die. And the goal is to trap them to temporarily stop them coming after you or if you can keep them trapped in the ground long enough that the block respawns because every block respawns after a certain period of time you can actually kill the enemy however nothing stays permanently dead in this game when you kill an enemy it will eventually come back in a different part of the level and most of the levels actually have bonuses for getting through them without killing anybody but it can still be to your benefit, oops, I screwed that up. It can still be uh, to your benefit to do that sometimes, to give yourself a little bit more breathing room, if you will, to get through a level. So you have to kind of base that. And at the end of the day, you are trying to get through the, you are trying to get through the level and just get to the end. There we go. But you're also fighting for score. So in order to complete a level, you have to pick up all of the, the gold that's within a level. It's called they, they, In the original game, it was called gold. And once you pick up all of the gold, you see the exit ladder spawns, and then you climb out. So you get points for every bit of gold you pick up, you get points for enemies you trap, and you there's bonuses for completing the level within a certain amount of time. You also have a bonus multiplier that goes down each time you die. You can die as many times as you want, but eventually that multiplier will hit zero, which will obviously impact your... your score as well and you saw there at the end there are bonuses for completing that this also has the mobile game style three star system uh as you can see some levels have invisible blocks there too this does have the mobile game three star system uh but it doesn't seem to you can there are achievements tied to getting a certain number of stars and also if you're really crazy getting all the stars in a level so you do have the uh th that to chase if you wish all right, so you're kind of getting the idea here, but you're sort of, you see how this really looks weird, right? At 30 frames a second. I mean, I'm playing on a, on a pretty powerful computer here with a 1080 in it. It's insane to me that a game that looks like this is locked at 30. And it's, it's even more insane to me that there's only two resolution options and that if I, and that I, the frame rate is not locked. Like if you're going to make me play at 30, at least lock it that way. So that if I have a higher refresh rate monitor, I don't get hosed on that front. I just, uh, I don't understand. So, all right, and you basically get the idea here of what you're going for, and sometimes you see you can also do this, because there's these white blocks that you can't break, and oh crap, I screwed this up and I'm stuck. So if you hold down the Y button on the controller, you basically give up, and you sacrifice the life, and the level begins anew, and there you have it. All right, so where I'm also going to show you something else here. There's another really weird option. I don't know why they thought this was, this was a good idea, but there's a second camera angle that you can pick here. What the actual? Yeah, I. it's basically first-person mode. Now, you still can see the actual mini-map on the right there, so you can play the game like you would normally. I don't know if this was just a mode for people who want a crazy hardcore challenge, or... I, I, I don't understand, but why in the actual heck would you ever want to play the game that way? I have no clue whatsoever. No, none at all. 
Now you may have noticed something else interesting there as well, which is that I picked up those two pieces of gold. So here we're going to another portion of the game. I guess it's not every 10 levels, but this is where enemies are introduced. Not much to it, but it's kind of cute, you know? Oh, interesting, it didn't save my uh, camera choice there. That's kind of funny. So here you see the other mechanic. So I can trap an enemy like that. And you see he kind of just sits for a minute and then he's like, Durr. Now the enemy timer means that they will climb out of a block before it fills back in. If you do it quick enough ahead of time of them falling into it. If you time it right, you can see you can do what I did there, which is that you have the means to actually have the block close in on him, which despawns him, and then makes him come back in. But you see, I only got two stars on that level because I didn't get the bonus for uh, having no kills. And of course, I also didn't mention every every level does have online leaderboards. So what you, you're competing with for your score with other people, of course. I mean, that's pretty much part and parcel these days with games like this, right? So the, the only thing the enemies do in this is they take the path of least resistance to you. So you see, they do weird things like that sometimes. And it's kind of funny to me because that's actually a holdout from the original game. Making the enemies kind of spasm in place like that because they didn't really know, they didn't know how to get to you is actually something the original game did. And I, it is janky, yes, it's janky. Oh God, how you doing? Oh, well that's weird. Oh, it's because he fell into a block I already took out. Right, that's why. So you see there's little things like that you have to keep track of. And back in the day, it was basically just a function of janky AI and the fact that the computers of the day just couldn't handle it very well. And it does feel to me, especially with a title like Load Runner Legacy, it does really feel to me like that's something they left in and on purpose. Because this is a game that to me at least is really designed to appeal to people like myself who played the, this series back in the day and have fond memories of it from a nostalgic perspective. I, it, it really feels like this title, oh, bugger. It really feels like this title to me is built much more around catering to that audience than bringing in new players. And that's fine, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But it's kind of cute, I just find that uh, kind, of a, kind of amusing. And there are uh, other enemy types that will get introduced later which are relatively new things, enemies that uh, don't necessarily pursue you, but that loop around uh, the levels in, there we go, but that will loop around the levels and uh, basically provide more of a, be more of an obstacle to you. Maybe I'll show you one of those here actually. So let's back out to, of that and we'll show you this here. So you can go back and play any level that you played before, of course, to uh, to get more, more stuff built up. Um, you do have to finish each level to progress to the next one in the main mode here, but in uh, I believe it is in the classic mode, you can choose whatever level you like. So yeah, here's an idea here. So let's go check this one out. So after the last level, these enemies get introduced and you're gonna see how they work. Yeah, so these guys are not actually pursuing you. They are just enemies that loop around the levels or the different platforms and which can screw up your own timing in that regard. So kind of a different spin on things, which is nice. It brings in some challenge. And that's the thing, both with the original Load Runner and with this, the levels get very, very tricky after a while. This is at its core a puzzle game, but it is not really a relaxing Zen puzzle game because it is based on score attack and it is based on avoiding enemies and being pursued. So th this game gets very, very tough and that's by design. Uh, it can get tough, it can get stressful and it can get frustrating because you can end up being in a position where you'll see there's one piece of gold left that you just can't figure out how to get to and you see your freaking score ticking down the whole time and you're like, I did, mm, what am I gonna do about this? Ugh. And it's, it's really, yeah, it can really uh, be an exhausting experience and th that is a puzzle game for a very specific type of player and so as you can see there, there's certain pieces of gold that have really massive scores attached to them and you that I, be, I believe the key with those is that you have to pick them up. Uh, I think you have to pick them up first. I don't know why I did that. 
So as you can see, you can you can shoot the block that is to your left or right, but not the one that you are presently standing on. So you have to be strategic about that. The thing that I don't like about the, the, the low frame rate in this, and to be honest, I don't think it's the frame rate per se, because a lot of people make the complaint that, oh, games to play at 30 frames a second are not responsive enough, and it feels like you're playing with molasses and blah, blah, blah. I have always thought that's incredibly overblown. But it does feel like that the the can the it does feel like that the input system of the game is being inhibited in some regard it it feels like there is a noticeable lag on the controller input sometimes so that when you're trying to to change your direction quickly or you're trying to quickly burrow out a block to stop an enemy something along those lines it does feel like there's just it's taking just a little bit longer than it should to do what you want it to do and that's weird because this game, as best as I can tell, is targeting 30 frames a second. I actually asked on the Steam forums, um, is this supposed to be like this? And I never got any official response. So this game is actually um, not developed by Tozai. It's actually developed by a small Japanese developer known as O2. I've never heard of them. Uh, I, I don't really know what their, their pedigree or, or... Dang it. I don't really know what their prior development experience is. But, yeah, I found that particularly perplexing uh, that, uh, you know, I, I asked why this ran at 30 and got no response, but it does seem particularly strange to me that a game that is seemingly designed to run at that frame rate is acting like it's, it's, it's being held back by it. Like it's acting like it's, it's running at a native 30, but it, in many ways it plays like that's a bug that's not supposed to be there. This game has only received two updates since it came out back in July, and neither one addressed with that, and at least at this point, it doesn't look like it's getting updated anymore, uh, possibly because it hasn't sold very well. I, uh, I, I don't know. The whole thing I find very confusing and strange. So, all right, so I kind of screwed that one up, and you see I didn't get the glowing block first, so I didn't get the huge bonus. But you're sort of seeing the idea of it here. Um, it's a puzzle game, and it's a puzzle game that starts out relatively straightforward, but gets very, very hard very fast. And it's rather frenetic, and its pacing gets gets rather crazy rather quickly. And it's not for everybody. You gotta you gotta like that kind of game. You know, I've never been the biggest puzzle game guy, only because I'm not good at it. Um, the puzzle levels are pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we need to really need to go into these. It's very simple. It's that hey, here there's a there's a a relatively simple looking level that actually has a rather devilish challenge aspect to it that you have to complete before you can yeah you can move on to the next one uh and that's kind of how that works Th these levels are also all unlocked from the get-go as well which is kind of nice so you can choose to if one is really too tough for you you can just say i'll screw this and move on which is kind of cool so you know i could jump right into level 16 here if i wanted obviously these levels being rather simplistic there's no load times so it's really nice and quick so you know things like that's kind of cool they do claim as well that this game only requires Intel HD graphics, so it may run okay on a laptop on low detail. Um, haven't tried that myself, but given how it runs on a 1080, I don't know if I agree with that. And then, of course, here's the classic levels. So, this is not the original Load Runner art style, but it is their attempt at recreating it within their sort of voxel art style. And one thing I will give them very much credit for is it has the original sound effects. So the noise when you pick up the gold, what you'll hear is the end of level tone. Stuff like that. That's all very original Commodore 64 style stuff. And again, that to me indicates very clearly that this is a game built around appealing to nostalgia, but that's cool. And they, they make that appeal in a very respectful way, in a very cool way, I think. They also do say in the credits that they attribute the original designer of Load Runner, who, I'm sorry, his name is escaping me right now. We will find that out later. These levels also only have two stars, as you can see. But they do give a, a tribute to the original designer of Load Runner, who sadly passed away in 2014. And that's very cool. And it's really nice that they put all this stuff in here. And that as simplistic as this art style is, it it they put in the time and effort to make it look as close as they could to the original Load Runner uh, w within their engine. So I, I feel it's kind of a tribute, and that's very that's very cool, that's very nice. And as you can see, you're playing this game with their their scoring mechanics 
put on top of it. So it's it's old school, but also a little bit of retro too, which I think is pretty neat. I, you know, overall, I, I, I think in that aspect, I think it's a very nice tribute and a very nice uh, way to show people the roots of this series you know it is called load runner legacy and i and that yeah they are they are showing people what that where the, the the rather by today's standards humble beginnings that this series had uh which is cool that's the thing i like everything about it that they're going for i'll be honest with you i played a lot of load runner back in the day but it's puzzle games have never really been have never been my scene lately just because i have a billion different games that i have to play and frankly i'm impatient and when a puzzle game gets too tough for me i just kind of get frustrated and flame out and that's a that's a failure of me that is 100 percent on me and i totally understand that so i don't know if i'd necessarily play this at great length anymore uh in this day and age but they made a load runner game and load runner from a mechanical design perspective was always really interesting it was a little bit platforming and you know a little bit of a a little bit of a problem solving you know quick thinking on your feet type ah shoot see that's the other thing as well if you don't uh, burrow out the space before the guys fall into it and they get they get over it you they basically cancel your your drilling which uh, is also kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it was at the time it was considered a fairly impressive evolution of the puzzle genre back in the 8-bit day. And its design is still unique. There aren't a lot of games like that play this way and that do puzzle stuff in this regard. And it's kind of a a unique way to combine action and puzzle elements in the same thing, you know. A high pace action game, this isn't necessarily, but it definitely can be stressful and it can be tense and it can feel like an action game, but without the crazy pace of it. You know, you don't have to be a, a hardcore Twitch gamer to be able to appreciate this. Uh, and that's really cool. What really drags this down for me, unfortunately, is the technical aspects. The frame rate is unacceptable for a game that looks like this and runs on an engine like Unity, which obviously, you know, has issues with frame rate a lot of the time, but is nonetheless capable of doing 60 frames a second. And in a game that was PC first, no reason for that. This was made by a Japanese team and, you know, like it or not, Japanese studios do tend to have not the greatest track record when it comes to PC ports, though they are getting a lot better. And the reason for that is just that PC gaming is not as big a deal in Japan as it is in North America. It is much more becoming so, I feel, but it wasn't for the longest time. And so as a result of that, a lot of Japanese developers just don't either have the knowledge or the interest in putting real time into PC ports, but it's just perplexing to me because this isn't a port. This is the only place you can play this game right now. I assume they must have console plans for it in the future. Tozai's put a lot of stuff out on consoles over the years. They've also done a lot of mobile work, so maybe they plan to bring it there and just haven't yet. But to have a game that, again, won at least in its optimal configuration, is locked at a, at, a, at a weak frame rate that results in control lag, but also not to even lock it at that frame rate so that if you, ha if you are running a gaming PC, you're going to have a worse experience because it'll look better and play worse. Like, <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I, that just, it, that is a real deal breaker for me for, for $20 in this day and age, we should not be expected to make sacrifices like that uh, on the PC. And especially not when a game at least has started off as a PC exclusive. It's just not, that's not good enough. So I'll show you here as we close off a couple of the user levels. So these are recent ones. I mean, look at some of the stuff, like I'll give credit here. Like this is insane, some of the stuff you can make. So I picked the level here. It doesn't have any sort of progress indicator on the download or anything like that. It will just look like it's frozen. But I mean, look at this. Like this is Gonzo. Now, I mean, granted it's pretty friggin' hard to play because everything is uber tiny, but also holy Livingston crap, man. Like. 
there are some the load runner games back in the day you actually used to be able when you made a game in load runner back on the commodore one of the cool things about it too was that it was one of the few games that let you save your levels to bring at least at the time to save your levels and bring them to your friends this obviously allows you to do that on a much grander scale because it it you can upload your levels online but the editor allows for some immense creativity here. I, I'm going to back out of this because I don't think we could get very far in this, to be frank about it. Let's check the popular stuff. So, yeah, like, look at the at the scope you can get into with some of these things. Or look at this one. Yeah, like, really look at it. Yeah, what is that? Uh-huh. I know. And... I love seeing stuff like this. I love games that give a, a level editor like this and people who are able to use it to a really big creative feat, even when it's in a game that's not that popular. You know, I find stuff like that really awesome. Um, and in that respect, they did well by, well, the legacy of, of Load Runner. You know, the DNA of it, 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 the original creator is not with us anymore, but the, oh God. But the DNA of this game is in here. It's got a ton of levels, it's got creative gameplay, and it's got the, you know, one of the pioneering titles in the concept of user-generated content shows it in full display with all the modernizations of that concept that you would expect. And I find that really amazing and a really nice tribute to this puzzle game that it has kind of been forgotten and is not really that big a deal anymore, but has, you know, been sort of revitalized. But the technical aspects really ruin it for me. Uh, if it was me personally, uh, you know, how big a deal these are or is going to be up to you. Uh, you know, much as I whine about certain people who make way too big a deal out of frame rate, it's nonetheless, it is a subjective thing. And if, if it's important to you, I understand completely. Uh, and if that's the case, you may want to wait for this on sale. I think I probably would have. Only because... Not so much because of the visual aspect of the poor frame rate, but because this game, at its normal frame rate, it feels like it's controlling at an even lower frame rate than it's being displayed at. And... That's not cool by me. And that's, you know, PC gamers in 2017 should definitely be able to expect better than that. Those issues aside, though, if those are not a big deal for you and you're someone who does remember Load Runner fondly or who just wants a really interesting and challenging action puzzle game, I definitely recommend this. There is a redonkulous amount of content in here for 20 US dollars. I mean, there's 200 different levels, uh, some of which are very difficult. and You could spend hours and hours and hours and hours in this. And then there's all the user levels and the ability to make your own as well. So... Yeah, to, to, to put it mildly, there is uh, no shortage of value in that respect, but I would really like to see Tozai and O2 fix the frame rate. I'd like to see them put in more resolution options, and I would just like them to make this currently PC-exclusive game much more like a PC game. You're using the Unity engine, the options are there. I don't really think you have much of an excuse, to be frank about it, but yeah. That is Load Runner Legacy, developed by O2 and published by Tozai Games in 2017. It is available for $20 US on the PC. I've been playing this on Steam. It is a very nicely done. It is a very nicely done tribute to Load Runner um, and to well the legacy of that series and its creator uh, right here, Douglas E. Smith. I apologize for missing that before. There's a lot to like about it, but the technical side is inexcusable right now. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked what you saw here, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That does help me out a great deal. If you want to watch something else, check out the videos on screen now. And don't forget to follow at PXA Media on Twitter to find out about new stuff first.